Hi, this is Paul, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to install the scripts and configure the IMAP software to work with the scripts. Now, the first thing we're going to have to do is download some files. So you're going to get them from my forum. So that is icon.paulhenty.com. And then go to the downloads and video links. And these topics contain the files we need. So the first files we're going to get are the documentation files. So I am going to download that to a folder on my computer. I'm going to make a new one called icon scripts. And we're going to put all of the files into here. Now they're all zip files, so we're going to need to unzip them. So on Windows, right click and extract all. So these are the documents that you get. You get an installation guide, which is basically this video, but in written form. You get a user guide and there's separate ones for the P1M and V1M and uh, a different one for the Nano, because that works a bit differently. And you'll get this touchscreen buttons, uh, which we're going to be using um, a bit later on to set the touchscreen up. Now, these are the requirements for using the script. Um, they run on Windows or Mac. You have to have Studio One version 6 or later. These are the IMAP versions that you need, the minimum versions you need. And these are the minimum firmware versions you need. So look up whatever unit you've got and make sure that you're up to date on the firmware and the IMAP. And these scripts do require that you have the display. So first, we're going to look at setting up the IMAP software. Uh, I'm going to be demonstrating here on the P1M IMAP. If you've got a different unit, it'll look a bit different, but they all work in the same way. The first thing I recommend doing is just backing up whatever settings you have at the moment before we go and uh, change them. So if you go down to the bottom here and click Save File, then you can choose a location to save your backup to and just give it a name. IMAP backup, for example. Now, if you mess up, you can always get back to where you were by clicking the load file and just selecting the, the backup file, and that will restore you to where you started. So there are three options for setting the buttons up. Uh, each have their pros and cons. I'm going to show you all three in this video. So you can pick the one that most suits you and then use the chapter markers to jump to that particular method. So the first one is a really easy way, and that is just to import all the buttons uh, from a file. Um, however, you will lose any um, buttons that you've already programmed up. So this is a good method if you haven't set up your own custom buttons yet. The second method is adding the buttons to the touch screen manually. With that one, you get to keep any custom buttons that you've already set up. However, it does take a little bit longer. And the third option is for people who are already using my custom scripts and uh, just want to upgrade to the latest version. So this is going to show you how to import the touchscreen buttons that you need from the file. And this will overwrite any buttons you already have. From the forum in the download section again, you need to go to this topic, IMAP touchscreen map files, and download this zip file. and unzip it again. So just take a note of where you've unzipped them to, and there's a different file for each of the uh, supported units. So we're now gonna go back into the IMAP software, select the slot that you want to use. I'm just gonna use slot one here, and make sure Studio One is selected. And then to get the shortcut menu up, we're going to right click in any of this sort of blank space here, and down here we'll do as well. So right click, and we're going to select load DAW mapping. Then we're going to navigate to where we save those touchscreen files. And you'll just see the one that's appropriate for your particular device. So select that one. It should be called Studio One Custom Scripts. And press open. And that will now have configured your touchscreen buttons to just the buttons that work with this script. And if you find there's buttons in here that you never use, you can obviously delete them and overwrite them with your own custom buttons.
So this option is for people who want to keep their custom buttons that they've been using with the default Mackie control script. So we're gonna to need to open some documentation. So we'll go to where we unzipped our documentation earlier and we're gonna need this touchscreen buttons PDF. So we'll just open that. So this shows you all the buttons uh, for the custom scripts. Now, some of the buttons are already in the Studio One profile and they're highlighted in green. Um, some of them have a different name, so you might want to rename those. That's the, uh, this column here will show you what the current name is in the Studio One profile. So this is just the, uh, the, the default Studio One profile that I've got set up in here. We've got track, that's fine. That's already there. We've got send, pan, plugins is already there. Now this here Q, uh, if you're using Q mixes, uh, you might want to activate the Q mixing. Um, so you're going to have to rename this FX button here. So I'll just show you that. Uh, click on the FX button, go to the MIDI, fill in the channel, otherwise you won't be able to rename it. And then just rename that to Q. More. So the focus button isn't on here, so we're going to need to add that. So we'll have to free up a slot here. There's maybe toggle window. We'll get rid of that one. So we'll click on that. Right click up here and say clear current button. And now we can program that up for our focus button. So we go to channel one again and select the message value. So the focus here is on uh, is number 52. So select 52. And then we just need name that to focus. So that's all there is to it really. You just need to go down the list and add in any of the buttons that you're likely to use. But so this option is for people who are already using my custom scripts, but just want to upgrade uh, to the current version. Now, if you were previously using a version that began with zero, um, then you will be using the Bitwig profile. Um, the newer scripts uh, from version one onwards um, now are able to use the Studio One profile. So the first thing we have to do is convert your current profile from Bitwig back into Studio One. Now, if you're not using the Bitwig profile, if you're coming from a version which was always using Studio One, then you can obviously skip this conversion bit. So here we are in the IMAP software and you can see I've got my door set to Bitwig because I was using the old version of the custom scripts. So to convert this, what we need to do is we need to right click in any of the blank space here to get the shortcut menu up. And then we're gonna save the DAW mapping. And you can save this wherever you want, just make a note of where it's going. Uh, this is just my documents folder here. So I'm gonna call that to Studio One, and we're just going to save. Now you can find that in your file explorer, and this is the file here to Studio One. Your extension might be different depending on your device, but either way, you now, you now need to open this up in a text editor. So on Windows, that's something like Notepad, on Mac, that's something like Text Edit. And don't use a word processor because it will add formatting and it'll completely mess it up. So we're on, I'm on Windows here, so I'm going to right click and open with, and then I'm going to select Notepad. It's an XML file, and all we're interested in is this mode line here up the top. And we're just going to make some changes here. So the ID, you need to change to eight. And the mode, delete Bitwig and type Studio hyphen one, <clears throat> exactly like that, all lowercase. And and make sure you keep the speech mark so it has to look exactly like this. Now, if you prefer to copy and paste, uh, I will put this line in the description of this video so you can just grab it and paste it over. So once we've done that, we just need to save and then close it up because we don't need it anymore. Now, back in the uh, IMAP software, we're going to right click again in the gray space, and this time we're going to load the DAW mapping. And then we're going to select this file again to Studio One, and then we're going to open it. 
and now you can see that it's switched it back to Studio One and it will have kept all your buttons exactly as they are. So now you might need to add some buttons in. So we're going to go to the documentation that we downloaded earlier. So this is my downloads folder where I put all the downloads and this is the icon documentation folder. And then you need to open this touchscreen buttons PDF. Now this shows you all the buttons that are used by the scripts, but if you come down to the bottom, we have the list of buttons added by the different versions. So you can see what version you used to be on. So maybe you used to be on 0.3 and now you're upgrading to 1.0. There's four more new buttons that have been added. So you could have a look at these buttons and see if there's any that you'd like to use. And then you can just add them onto your touch screen wherever you want. So now we're going to install the script files. So we're going to go back to the forum, the downloads and videos links section. And you need to find the scripts topic. Um, the version will be different because it just tells you what the current version is. So you'll have a later version than 0 0.3. You can read the change log here and just download the zip file. And I'm going to download it into this icon scripts folder we made earlier. And then we need to unzip it. So now we need to open Studio One. So you can do everything from this front page here. You don't need to open a song or anything. And the first thing we're going to do is open the Studio One settings folder, which you can easily do by opening the help menu and then open settings folder. And that will bring up your file explorer um, in the correct place. So you don't have to go searching for it. So what we need to do now is just copy the scripts over into this folder. So I've got the Studio One settings folder up on the left here and on the right, this is the scripts that I downloaded um, a little bit earlier. So the first thing you need to do is make a, a new folder in here and you need to call it user space devices. Now you may already have a folder here called user devices. Um, you can just use that one. All you need to do now is copy this icon unofficial folder into here. Now, after you've copied the scripts over, you need to restart Studio One. And now we can go to the Options or Preferences dialog. And to do that, you go to the Studio One menu. If you're on Windows, like I am, you're looking for Options. And if you're on Mac, you're looking for Preferences. And then in the Options or Preferences dialog, you need to select this tab, External Devices. If you've been using the Mackie control, you can highlight that and remove it now. So now we need to add in any devices you're going to be using. So press the add button and look for the icon unofficial folder. And here are all the supported units. So select the one you've got. Uh, so for example, the nano, set your MIDI receive and sends and press okay to add it. Now there's one extra step if you have uh, any of the extender units. So let's say you have a P1M and two extenders. Uh, you have to go to replacement, choose one of the groups, but they all must be in the same group. And you can drag them into a group and then position them however they are arranged on your desk. So you might have the main unit on the right, or you may have uh, your main unit in the middle. So I'm now going to show you how to program the function keys to perform actions within the DAW. For this we are going to need a song. And then we're going to the mixer and then you need to show external devices with this little button here. I've got a P1M installed here. So if you double click that it'll come up with the programming window. And the user programmable ones that we can set here are the function keys. There's eight of them and the foot switch pedals. Uh, first of all, make sure the focus is global. So make sure you don't have any plugin windows open or instruments open. Then you right click on one of the blue buttons. So in this example, we're going to have F1 open and close the browser. So we're gonna right click and assign command. Then you can search for 
a command you want. So if I put browser and then I can scroll down and find view browser. That sounds like the one I want. So I press OK on that. So now every time I press the F1 key on the touchscreen button, um, it's going to open and close the browser and I can simulate that by clicking here as well. Now, once you've programmed up a command in here, it's probably useful to go back into the IMAP software and rename your F1 button to whatever you, you programmed it as. So you go over to the MIDI tab here. Sometimes the channel's blank. You have to fill it in, make sure it's one, and then just rename this to whatever function that you've assigned. <laughs> 